Hi guys, this is Tesla Coil Build Log Part 10. I'm on a walking track in the middle of the night. It's very windy, so I'm going to get in the car. And that's the view at night. I can't show you much. Uh, but there are a couple of these guys around, interesting little things. In the last video, I said I was going to paint this flyback transformer housing, uh, and I've done that. Um, this is the first coat. Which uh, was I crap. Did a second. Uh, and how it looks depends entirely on the camera angle and lighting. Uh, so that one there looks a lot different to this one here. I've measured up most of the components that go on the base plate. There's a few things missing, uh, but that's to code up a program and uh, get it onto uh, some sort of CAD so I can move objects around. And that's what you see here. Uh, the components missing there are the capacitor array, the chokes and the spark gap. Um, they'll have to be sorted out later. A little bit more coding because uh, I want a version that uh, this time I've tilted the solid state relay uh, bank and also want to be able to leave bolt holes uh, which is the whole idea and measurements like that. When it comes to fixing the coil assembly on top of the rest of the transformer I'm going to have to find a way to connect to this uh, standoff with the bottom of the coil and so far um, it looks like I'm going to turn the bottom uh, turn inwards a little and attach it with a spade lug. Uh, and it might be one of these. Uh, these are a little bit big. I'm not entirely happy with them, but I do have them. Mental torture. Winding more than four meters of wire over three chokes, over three nights. Uh, it's a total of eight to nine hours, and I've got them centered at 530 kilohertz, which is pretty good. That was a waste of a paint job, perhaps. You can't see it. And here they are. Not one choke, not two chokes, but three chokes. How about that? Things work when you measure everything. This is all just a, a practice run uh, turning this coil inwards. Uh, I'm going to have to practice bending around an arc, which is probably going to be the shaft of a screwdriver, and I have settled on using this lug. The audio I'm recording now is from home a couple of days after the first bout of work, so this is uh, another two days spent on the primary form. So yeah, here's a practice where I'm marking out the copper and where to turn to make sure it all works so I don't mess up this new roll. Turning a little bit of the tube and soldering the lug was the very first thing I did with this roll after a practice run uh, to test the measurements are correct. After a bit of practice winding on the assembly from my spare coil, it became evident I'm not going to be able to wind a preformed coil onto the assembly, uh, so I've got to wind it straight off the roll. Ta da! You'll notice there the printing from the factory on the side of the copper tube. I'll take care of that later. When I first fixed the acrylic together to make the primary form, it all sat evenly on a flat surface such as glass and didn't rock at all. But since soldering the lug on, I've had uh, about two or three mil of solder drip off the uh, lug. So I'm gonna take that off with a Dremel. And here's my fancy setup with a, a vacuum cleaner just hanging there and uh, the Dremel with a uh, sanding tool. I've already done it as I'm showing you this, but uh, this was the setup. And it came out well clear. There's one or two mil to spare, and that spade lug has clear heat shrink over it, so there's another one mil or so. This video is now showing the assembly fixed to the rest of the transformer. It wasn't perfectly flat, but flat enough to use the runny solvent. Uh, I cut a cotton bud in half and used the stem of that to feed it in with capillary action, sort of like a quill, like a fountain pen. I can only guess now that it's the force of the copper itself that's slightly deforming the assembly. And if you remember this printing on the copper that I mentioned before, it comes off easily with isopropyl alcohol. And uh, I've used that to clear it up because uh, I don't want to touch the thing again when it comes to taking photos at the end. This is all going to be oxidised and I'd prefer that to be even. It isn't easy to get a straight photo of this. So there'll be some frame in there that might be. So yeah, the next idea is to print up dimensions and then make a uh, base out of plywood with the measured holes, uh, uh, just pretending to know nothing about the shapes at all and going off the generated measurements. Uh, then place all this stuff on it. And if that all works, send the base off for manufacturing. 